versus Kendall Burdett. Mentioned Burdett over on your left, a Florida big player, teaming with another for, or a Georgia player. Apologies there. So the local team here, Alex Hahn and Kendall Burdett. Their third, Tyler Wilkinson. Wilkerson, a victory. He has a open championship and standard in Orlando from 2014. Actually double top aided that weekend. Went as far as the top four before he lost the chance to go back to back. Uh, certainly a strong player. So but we are going to go to the modern match where Adrian Carr is playing dredge. Starts on insolent neonate. Our other matchups, if we can get to them, in Legacy, Alex Hans, Jeskai Stoneblade is playing against Ryan DeSutter on Colorless Eldrazi. And in Standard, we have a matchup of two of the most popular decks, Tyler Wilkerson's Mono Red Aggro versus Jake Dersheimer's White Blue Monument. Yeah, those, those decks early on making a strong argument for being the best two decks in Standard, certainly in contention in the top five. Yeah, a bit of an evolution from last week. We knew White Blue Monument was good, Mono Red really upping its game this weekend. Yep. So Thought Seize from Kendall Burdett will show a hand here. Uh, a second land, Stinkweed Imp, Bloodgast, Cathartic Reunion, and I believe we have Prized Amalgam hiding in there. That's what it looks like. Not really much of the way of gold cards yeah. in the dredge deck. And, and this looks like a win here on Kendall's side. A lot of times when you Thought Seize the dredge deck, you get nothing of value. He did manage to get Cathartic Reunion before Adrian was able to cast. Right. And he's going to sacrifice. Looks like sacrifice the neonate. Discarded bloodcast. All right. This is interesting. So he had the option to discard Stinkweed Imp and dredge it, but he's actually going for bloodcast. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. He does plays a land and misses the landfall trigger on the bloodcast as well. Yeah, and, and, and he said go. Dad. Yeah, I don't, he's not going to get that trigger. Yeah, we are getting pretty deep in the tournament. All right. Yeah, fair enough. Played a lot of Magic this weekend. I've been there, especially a deck like Dredge, which is so trigger intensive. Yeah, I actually, I'm not proud, but this year I did fail to check on a Delver of Secrets one time. Oh, wow. It wouldn't have flipped. But oh, I, didn't, so, okay. I, didn't, I didn't check. You drew the card and they're like, wow, what just happened? I drew a card and then the next turn, when I was going to my turn, I was like, you know, trigger Delver. I was like, I didn't do this last turn. <laughs> Actually, I'm like, ah, so it's okay, it wasn't. So would you tell your opponent then that it wasn't a spell or that it was a spell? I told my opponent, I'm going to do this this time and pointed at my Delver. <laughs> Say it. I wanted, I would probably say the lines of, I wanted it to be a 1-1, one, one, and then I'd name some plummet variant I was playing around. <laughs> Don't want to get corrosive galed again. Yeah, gotta, <laughs> gotta dodge that leaf arrow, here go. Kendall will thought scour himself here. And then cast Gurmag Angler, we see a delve of the entire graveyard he wants the angler. So 5-5 five, made five on Kendall's side. We'll go back to Adrian's third turn. He not going to get too, it's not really much of a punishment on missing the bloodgast. He does get to fetch on end step, so it's still going to be attacking actually on the same turn. So he goes and gets stomping ground. Right. Yeah, he can't bring it back twice if it never dies. So he does need to bring it back this time. <laughs> turn two Gurmag Angler is one of the more powerful starts you can have for the yeah. Grixis Shadow deck. There we go. Blood gas, of course, cannot block. So Kendall has done a decent amount of damage to himself, already down to 12. It almost had haste. Draw for Adrian's Cathartic Reunion. That's a big draw here. Could set him up for some deep dredging. Oh, yeah. Discard that Stinkweed Imp, dredge that. Hope to find another one in those five cards. Yeah, he has Dakmore Salvage as well, so he has two dredgers to discard. Let's see what he does. Here's Cathartic Reunion. Discard Stinkweed Imp. Looks like Prized Amalgam, another option. Yeah, I'll put those in the yard. Let the dredging start. He needs his Imp to dredge over another dredger. Mm -hmm. And the Salvage only dredges for two. Getting the Amalgam in the graveyard, if there's a Narc Amoeba yeah. here, that's very good. Looting, one, two, lands, three lands. Ugh. Prized Amalgam, he's going to miss. He has to draw cards for the remaining two. 
that's not what he wanted it to be. There, and then Loam is the next card, of course. Yeah, that's just how it goes. He'd like to get that uh, blood gas back in his graveyard yeah. so that he can play a land and trigger those amalgams. He could attack. Yep. Just, just swing. See if Kendall... I, I wouldn't balk if I was Kendall, but... <laughs> Going to go ahead and shock down to 15. And conflagrate for zero to put it into the graveyard, says go. I do like putting the conflagrate into the graveyard here. Yep, they'll allow him to discard that life from the loam. Get back with the stinkweed imp as well and get back on the dredge train. Swing of Gurmag Angler. Bloodgast cannot block, so it'll be car down to 10. Yeah, and on that last turn, if a car swung the Bloodgast, it's probable that Kendall just goes to 10, but it is two points of free damage. And in the off chance that Kendall blocks, well, Adrian's really happy with that. Right, in particular when you're trying to close the game on Conflagrate. And if uh, Kendall presents some Death Shadows here, that'll apply a lot of pressure. For Burdette, it is a fetch and a shock down to nine. Speak of the devil. Speak of the shadow, death's shadow. 4-4 <laughs> four, four right now. A lot of cards in the deck allow that to convert into a lethal attack on the following turn. You know, currently sure. it's nine. Fetch land, shock lands, thought seize, cold against command, target myself, cycle street wraith. That's a long list. So go back to Adrian. He does not have any blockers this turn. So I was facing down what is it? likely lethal. It's one short as it stands. See, life from the loam, conflagrate in hand. With conflagrate, he can discard more dredgers, but he's at a loss for ways to produce blockers right here. Right. He has a stinkweed imp that he can cast. He doesn't need to just get dredgers in his graveyard. He needs to dredge and he needs to hit narcomoebas. Just needs to get bodies on the table. Looking at life from the loam, consulting here with teammate Jake Dershimer. about the play. This is really the pivotal turn for Adrian. He needs to survive to his next turn. It'll be life from the loam, getting back three lands. This will allow him to conflagrate something. Sure. Yeah, get, in, get another red source on the battlefield, add a couple extra right. cards to the hand. Yeah, it gets back three lands, okay. If he wants to, he could go for the Shadow or the Gurmag Angler with this many cards. Yeah, I mean, the safe play would be to go, I guess, for the Angler in case there's a Street Wraith hiding. But maybe you have to try to go for the Shadow and just hope that it doesn't grow. I mean, if he... Because he has to shock for the Red Source or take some damage. At least fetch. This goes down to nine. You see, it looks like he's going to get a basic mountain. If you only burn the Angler, you're running a risk that... Death you, Shadow Death can Shadow just get to nine. Grows. Yeah. Even at four, you're not necessarily yeah. safe. If he's going to point to the Conflagrate at the Shadow, you figure he's got to put all his cards into it. Yes. And there's a few that he wants to discard anyway. That Stinkweed Imp, of course. Yeah, it looks like five cards in hand. So he does have a choice here. Can make sure to hit the Angler, or he can try to hit the Shadow. Flashes back Conflagrate. See which one he picks. Looks like it's four. He's going for the Shadow. A Street Wraith will get him here. Four damage to Death Shadow, discarding four cards. Does Kendall have the Street Wraith? That would be quite the play. Just, yeah, well, cycle this, go to seven. I don't think he has it, so. Right, yeah, that would make the attack lethal. Yeah. Could have Stubborn Denial as well, just to counter the mm -hmm. Conflagrate. I mean, that sounds great. But it doesn't matter what you target if that's what happens. He's thinking about something. Yeah, it's just gonna bend it, yeah. though. So that works. Adrian will, may survive to the next turn. 
and on tap for Kendall with Gurmag Angler draws Serum Visions. He had left up two mana, certainly representing that he had more play than that. Yeah, looks like he has a Terminate in hand, maybe some other action. Terminate will, might be okay here. There's, I don't see many ways with now Adrian using all his cards in his Conflagrate that Kendall could go to zero on the next turn. Yeah, with the with the cards available in the graveyard, you know, there's there's not more blood ghasts. Yeah, I think the concern would be if Adrian has a big dredge turn and dredges over, say, three narc amoebas. That you know, if, if Adrian dredges five with a name, dredges over three narc amoebas and then brings back all the amalgams, I could see Adrian winning from there. Yeah, and yeah, there's still some lines here. Yeah, dredge is a very powerful mechanic. Right, Adrian's dredges this game have been below average. He he's hit. I mean, he missed on the Cathartic Reunion to hit another dredger. He really hasn't hit an Arc Amoeba yet. Here comes Gurmag Angler, Adrian down to four. Follow-up play, Thought Scour, Kendall targets himself. Seems like the correct player to target. Yeah, I want to target the other guy. Stubborn Denial was picked up off the Thought Scour, but I don't see another blue mana. It looks like Blood Crypt, the land still on the battlefield here. Right, how many of his Shocklands actually produce blue? There's a steam vents and two watery grave. Yeah, this is still the two blood crypt version. We've seen a lot of players going towards three watery grave over that. Yeah, it actually looks like he has the basic island in the deck. Basic island and basic swamp. You're right, yeah, that one is always there. So blood crypt tapped plays another Gurmag Angler. So no stubborn denial up, but he has another 5-5. Five five. Delves away the whole graveyard. Two 5-5s five with the terminate backup means Car likely has to find a way to win this turn. And awesome. Yeah, I said three blood guests was the number I was saying, and he the number may be three. That's a lot to ask. We'll see if his deck can do it. Dredges Conflagrate, Prized Amalgam, Dark Blast, Stinkweed Imp. Now there is a faithless looting in the graveyard. Adrian will attack now with Blood Ghast. I do like the attack. May as well block. Sure. Or not block. Goes to seven. Adrian, looking for the rest of the turn. He's got, and he's going to go ahead and scoop up the cards. Takes the two damage, does not see a way out from there. Yeah, and Carr got flush with prized amalgams in the graveyard. Couldn't really bring him back. Yeah, I was hoping that the, the blood ghast died there. So game one will go over to Grixis Shadow in the hands of Kendall Burdett. He's their first game winner here, so he takes game one. And we'll take a look at the sideboard. Starting on Kendall Burdett's side, this frequently is a tough matchup for Grixis Shadow, though he finds himself in the situation where he's up a game. Four Leyline of the Void headlines the sideboard. I almost, you know, that just sticks out to me as him saying he needs to do something about this matchup. Yeah, yeah, this is the big one for Graveyard Hate. And then he also has a couple Anger of the Gods and an Is It Staticaster. It's a ton for this matchup. Some argument for Liliana the Last Hope as well. You know, this is all stuff that plays reasonably well here, and the spot removal spells aren't going to do anything. Yeah. You see him conferring here with teammate Alex Hahn. Alex looking at his opening seven. For the Stoneblade player, he's also winning in the first game. Jeskai Stoneblade takes game one off Ryan DeSutter. Things looking good for the team over on the left. Yeah, Colorless Aldrazi, another one of those prison decks we've seen a few of in Legacy, where the opening hand really is everything, where the Stoneblade deck can draw out of predicaments. All right, so we see Leyline of the Void, Anger of the Gods, is a Staticaster, Liliana of the Last Hope. These are all great. Do you even like Stubborn Denial here to counter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Like it can be a tempo play on Life from the Loam or just counter Conflagrate. Right, or you'd even hit Cathartic Reunion. That wouldn't be bad. Shuffle the entire sideboard in and cut 15 cards from the deck. <laughs> Maybe the question is, what does he take out? He's got, if he's bringing in 10 cards, right? Terminate's bad. Discard can be ineffective in this matchup, especially once you have a Stubborn Denial, which can counter 
the cathartic reunion. You don't necessarily need discard. Sure. Tough to convert Fatal Push in this matchup. He has some main deck Lily on the, the Veil. Both of the uh, first two modes on that are quite bad in this matchup. Yeah, and you're mentioning that about the discard because why Stubborn Now is better is because the only cards you actually want to take with the Thought Seas are cards like Stubborn, like Cathartic Reunion. Right, yeah, there could be a time where you cast a discard spell and you see a hand that's like Stinkweed Imp, Life from the Loam, Golgari Thug, Lands, and it's just like, okay, well I have to take one because my card forces me to take a card and putting these in the graveyard is good for you for all of them. On car side, for the Dredge player, we have three Collective Brutality, three Thought Seas, three Maelstrom Pulse, two Engineer Explosive, two Ancient Grudge, a Knot of the Bone, and a Vengeful Pharaoh. So the Dredge deck is really going to be trying to play the control in this matchup. Uh, the Grixis Shadow is more of a tempo-y role, which is kind of controlling, but more aggressive, where a car is going to be bringing in some Engineered Explosives to kill Death Shadows, Maelstrom Pulse to kill the Delve Threats or Shadows. Uh, that stuff's all quite good. Probably Vengeful Pharaoh as well. Yeah. So when you say control matchup, the idea would be if if the game goes to turn seven, Adrian's gonna win. Or, I mean, or, or, or is favored. It gets <laughs> the game's right. The game gets better as we go later that's on. That's quite the blanket statement to make. What I mean is the yeah. role he wants his cards to achieve is trading and killing Kendall's cards. Sure. Because eventually, yeah. So, and he also needs Maelstrom Pulse. It's his only answer to Leyline of the Void. I, engineered Explosives on four, not really a thing. <laughs> no, I mean, you have green, black, red, blue mana. You can get there. Probably not going to happen. Yeah, he was trying to keep pace. Now, he does have some cards to cut here. Main deck, some Dark Blasts. Not particularly going to work here. Yep. Uh, interestingly, Adrian's gone down on on his count for discard outlets. Uh, just a key, just a two copies of Insolent Neonate right now in the deck. That's... Actually, I think becoming somewhat standard to not play a set. Yeah, it's heavy on conflict rate. You don't always see four. You know, four copies in this deck as well. Yeah, full four conflict rate. Can be strong in a lot of matchups, especially what this reads to me is, is he wants to beat Affinity. Two Dark Blasts and four conflict rates main is a ton for that matchup. Yeah, those cards are certainly great there. Going on heavy on conflict rate increases your odds to find them, which will frequently be a lethal spell against the Death Shadow decks. All right. So, we were, remember this is from the 10 and 3 bracket. The winning team here, we believe, will be in for top eight. Now, at the team event, players here, the top four teams will earn invitations to our Invitational coming up in, in the beginning of December, the Season 2 Invitational. You too, though, can earn an invite to it with the Star City Games Invitational Qualifiers. These are tournaments held all around the country. They happen during, during the next six months to qualify for the Invitational. So you can find a list of them near you here at StarCityGames.com slash IQ. They feature $1,000 in prizes to the top eight, a pair of Invitational qualifications for the first and second place finisher. They earn you points here on the SEG Tour to help you get buys for our main open events. You get a top eight pin and playmat and some of these exclusive Invitational tokens. You can find out more at StarCityGames.com slash IQ. Really awesome local tournaments. You want to find out if there's one near you qualify for an Invitational. The Roanoke Invitational, we did the first one of that nature in season one this year. It was a sweet event. Make your way out in December. A second game coming up here for Kendall Burdett and Adrian Carr. Hmm. Ball just keeps on rolling. Got an update. See on our backup feature for the team of Tom Ross, Todd Stevens, and Jody Keith. They already have the best record in the tournament locked up, but Magic's fun, <laughs> and they're here to play. So they're going to play, and if they're playing, that means they're winning. They've now moved to 13-0-1 oh, with a win here. It's a pretty good record. Let's quote Tom Ross. No, fr no one's getting free wins. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And they'll be in an interesting situation in the top eight where they may have played everybody in the top eight already. I mean, it's certainly looking like it. Yeah. <laughs> They're getting paired way down at this point in the tournament. Yeah, they've already beaten all the other teams. 
We're seeing some mulligans in game two of our camera match here. Dredge, certainly a deck that mulligans a lot, just in general. You gotta make sure you have enablers and dredgers, and for our Grixis Shadow pilot, uh, Kendall Burdett, with the four Leyland into the Void, certainly a reason to mulligan in the cyborg games. You also only have a small number of things that you're really happy having in your opener anyway. Sometimes you have a stubborn denial. It's like, great, if all they have is Cathartic Reunion, this is fine, but then they just like already discarded their Dredger. You gotta have a combination of an aggressive draw and the disruptive spells. And players have kept, and we have a turn zero effect, Leyline of the Void. Yeah, so that'll be on Adrian Carr. Instead of his cards entering the graveyard, they'll enter exile. A update here on the standard games, A after game one, a quick game two finishes. Actually, so we have a game apiece for Jake Dershmer and Tyler Wilkerson. With mono red on one side, I'm not surprised to see two games already done. Yeah. Faith is leading the play from Adrian, so draw two and exile two. And once the ley line is on the battlefield, this becomes a matter of playing inefficient small creatures and trying to beat down. Yeah, yeah, small creatures, he needs to find lands and maybe cast a Maelstrom Pulse. Yeah, it, it looks like Carr only had the one lander in his opener and he faces looting into no more. Right, and that's, that's a huge risk. So over on Legacy, Ryan DeSutter on Colors Eldrazi takes the second game. So some help from his teammates is what Carr is getting, and he and he may need it facing down a ley line on a landlight hand. This is it's not where he wants to be. Okay, he did have forest, but it's just forest plus uh, copperline gorge. Can't cast Golgari Thug with that mana. Yeah, so he can't cast any of his creatures. Won't he even be able to cast a Malgum with another land. Yeah, can't cast the creatures. Does not have a third land. Does not have Maelstrom Pulse. He can cast this Cathartic Reunion, and there's plenty to get rid of here. Yeah. Discard a couple uncastable, inefficient creatures. So Narc Amoeba, pretty uncastable. And Golgari Thug. It's interesting to see what he's hanging on to. The remaining two cards in his hand are a prized amalgam and a stinkweed imp. And <laughs> after Adrian's done discarding, Kendall's got, a, got quite the response. Stubborn denial. Ooh. Cathartic Reunion is one of the cards that is you really don't want to see countered. Assuming you're able to have a graveyard <laughs> so that and is you like put a Stinkweed Imp in, it's still okay, but yeah, once you have graveyard hate that's, and you counter the reunion. That's just a three for one straight up. I guess the, the plus side is the cards Adrian discarded weren't really cards anyway. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. so, so it's not, it's a, it's just, I guess, it's not really a three for one if you weren't ever going to play the other two. Mr. Silver Lining over here. Yeah. It's fine. Weren't. You it's were fine. losing they, anyway. They weren't cards. Those, weren't <laughs> real, those weren't real cards you just got off me. You never had cards in your hand in the first place. <laughs> yeah. I'm on the receiving end of plays like that and say, yeah, I'm like, I didn't need those anyway. <laughs> Couldn't cast them. Your turn. <laughs> Whatever, man. I didn't have blue mana. I was I was tired of looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> or you play the uh, anti counter spell player character. Oh, counter spell, huh? I must feel good. Yeah. I feel like a big man now. <laughs> <laughs> Countering my spells. Right. <laughs> but, uh, Why but, can't we both just play our but, game? <laughs> bet you think you're so clever. <laughs> <laughs> Probably got Jace flavor text on that card. And Serum Visions and Polluted Delta for Kendall. And Austin just just passing back. Finds life from the loam. That, yeah. And once the lands in, in play, the lands he has, they don't cast any of the creatures for his game plan of cast a small creature and try to win. Right. The value creatures are the black and blue threats. So Copperline Gorge plus Forest not doing him any help. Swamp plus Maelstrom Pulse would be what he needs here. I think ideally he'd keep a hand that if he hits those two, 
can Amid just race out of the gates? Something sure. like Cathartic Reunion and a Dredger. And he did mulligan here. Yeah. He mulliganed into a hand that had Faithless Looting, Dredger. He kinda, Sounds great. You know, yeah. You hope you don't get hit by really oppressive graveyard hate and got hit by the most oppressive graveyard hate. This card is... Yeah, there's, you can't even race it. With Rest in Peace, you can sneak under it if you're on the play. Right. And here we go. Here's the Wincon, Snapcaster Mage. It's going to target Serum Visions. Kendall's down to eight. You see these Shadow Decks can turn these fortunes around very quickly. Yeah, Snapcaster Mage for Serum Vision is not the most exciting target, but just getting some creature on the battlefield, go to work on that life total. Ships both cards to the bottom. There was another Snapcaster in there, but only Stubborn Denial in the graveyard. Faith is looting from Aust Adrian, though. That'll try to recover. Still looking for a way to remove the, the Ley Line, but still no land, or no Or any yeah. castable spell whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. Lands the castle one in his hand. These prized amalgams, he's two lands, two specific colors of mana for being able to cast those, so those can go. Yeah, well, an amalgam and a loam go. I think at some point he saw him check his graveyard. He's being careful about how many of his prized amalgams he's actually exiling so that if he ever gets out from under this, there needs to actually be things left in his deck to win the game with. Yeah, you want to be able to do something. And Kendall still has yet to produce any of his yeah. giant creatures. Leyline of the Void, milled over. A gate crash Leyline to go with the course at one. Combo. Nice. And some lands in the hand of Kendall. Yeah, it seems like he's he's uh, thought scouring over lands, over spells and drawing lands. Yeah, but Death Shadow and Snapcaster Mage going to the graveyard, not where you yeah. want them. Well, here's a third land for Adrian. This one's a fetch land, so in theory it can get him black mana. He can actually start casting creatures now. Yeah, get those stinkweed imps on the battlefield. Go Let's to work. Let's do it, yeah. Kendall had a lot of free turns there, but didn't uh, produce pressure. Kendall's at eight. Yeah, this <laughs> is, it's not over. We kind of have a game yet. Blood Crypt is going to be the get here for Carr. So Stinkweed Imps online now. Didn't get blue mana, so still no prized amalgam, no Nark Amoeba. Looks like his hand, though, two Stinkweed Imps and an Amalgam. So, sure, he has castables for a couple turns. Here we go, Stinkweed Imp. Another land off the top for Kendall. Gonna crack that fetch. Maybe he does have a fatal push left in and in hand so he can push away the imp. It is nice with the ley line that that specific imp won't be coming back. As it does make it difficult for uh, Kendall to get any damage in. The old crack yeah, fetch fail to find. All right. Just takes damage. I mean, it, the, the part I like about the Death Shadow deck is sometimes that's correct. You right. see, he uses it just, yeah, for the revolt on Fatal Push. And sure, sometimes they just lose life intentionally because Death Shadow's neat. But yeah, the fetch line was fine. It's kind of like the fact that he picked up his deck and then failed to find after looking through okay, it. Okay, so that's when we're like, crack fetch, I think this is a fail to find. Yep, sure is. Right. It's just confirming what I know. Matthew Colfers. Matthew Colfers, your standard constructive events is ready to begin. Matthew Colfers. And? Continues to attack a Snapcaster Mage. So it's Snapcaster versus Stink. We named Car replaced the one that was exiled. Kendall has finally found Tassiger. All right, here is Tassiger, the Golden Fang. Get some of those cards you don't want back out of the graveyard. Leyline, you're the first to go. Thought Scour, don't need more of that. Stubborn Down. I think he's actually doing, he might be doing the reverse. He's choosing the ones he wants to keep. No. No, is that is not what's happening. Okay. He does we not don't want to we keep the ley line. Push? We don't know. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no. He, he's getting rid of. Okay. He's trying to make it. What is left other than lands? He's got uh, that other Snapcaster Mage, a Serum Vision. Okay. He has Anger of the Gods in the hand, so he can get rid of multiple creatures on the sure. following turn. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, 
Yeah, Fatal Push, he would still need to be able to trigger a Volt to get rid of a Stinkweed Imp in the first place. Okay. If yeah, and Anger a, of the Gods does have it covered. I'm, he doesn't mind getting rid of his own Snapcaster. Yeah. That's great. If it was like a Terminate, sure. Keeping that one makes sense. See Golgari Thug cast by Adrian. And here's a Tasker activation. Mills over another Tasker and a Snapcaster. Pretty willing to give the other Tasker back. Yeah, he is legendary, so seems fine. Adrian's just going to be sure. Checks through. We'll see, too. Tasker, Shadow. Don't want to give him Shadow. Yeah, the floor of cards... You know, the kind of cards you immediately look to give back are going to be you know, discard effects in the late game. You know, none of those available. The redundant legendary creature, the Tassiger, that one doesn't do a lot. And then like the cantrips are pretty bad. If there was a Thought Scour, getting that one with Tassiger doesn't feel great. Serum Visions a little weak as well. That gives him the Serum Visions. Suppose uh, there's a possibility if you're on cards out of the table, you'll actually be able to block the Tassiger with the Stinkweed Imp. So he doesn't. And you don't know. want to give him another one, yeah. Right. He's if he's playing to attrition here, block, block Tassiger, trade something like that. Yeah, you wouldn't want the second one. Yep. Thought sees. Takes care of Adrian's other amalgams. Uh, not now out of cards, and then anger of the gods will exile everything else. And Tasker hits for four. Adrian at seven. Looks like two swings. And. Car's going to want to find Maelstrom Pulse or Stinkweed Imp to get in front of this Tassiger. Find a way to stay in the game. And nothing of the sort. Uh, no sorcery go. speed action. Yeah, two hits remain. Here's one hit. Adrian to three. He's going to need a blocker, and he's going to need two blockers because here's Death's Shadow, and that's not going to do it. So game two will go to Kendall Burdett's Grixis Shadow deck. That'll be the match, and teams of Han, Burdett, and Wilkerson up one match to zero. In the other matches for the Standard and the Legacy, they are in game three. All right, so we'll get to those shortly here. And Adrian does it on his own terms, fetches for the stomping ground. So this means the pressure is on for Ryan DeSutter and Jake Dershmer. Each of them will have to win their match. For, for Jake, it is White Blue Monument for, with Mono Red Aggro. And you see both heads turning to that match. They're at a, we'll get to that when we can. We're going to go over to the standard game. That looks like where the next decision is going to be. So we get a life total set up here. Post board, game three of Red versus Monument. Tyler was the winner of game one. Jake evens out in game two. And Wilkerson playing a built to smash version of the deck. Low to the ground, very similar to what Tom Ross is playing this yeah. weekend. I was going to say, if Jake was at two, that's so scary. Jake at four playing against Hazaret is in a tough spot. Tyler's up to 20, but Tyler's almost out of cards. You draw a card every turn, which normally is nonsense. It's a nonsense thing to say, but with Hazaret, that's at least a shock every turn. Right, so Jake needs to gain life immediately. He'll take two on the end step, untap, and take two more. Find it, one of these sideboard declaration and stones. That would okay. be what he needs to solve the Hazaret. Yeah, to answer the Hazaret, that would work. He has a sideboard Blessed Alliance that could gain four life. And then actually Angel of Invention, if he can take a, find a spot to land it, would be a repeatable life gain effect. Sure. And it is going to come down to this because there's Jake's teammate, Ryan DeSutter, wins game three with Colorless Eldrazi. So match score is one to one. For Jake, he plays Militia Captain. He's got one card left. Says go. Tyler will discard, put him to two. And does that last card, the Blessed Alliance. We'll find out. Discards again, it's Magma Spray, and it is not. So it's going to be the match going to the team of Alex Hahn, Kendall Burdett, and Tyler Wilker Wilkerson. For the Georgia players here, that win brings them up to 11-3 and, three and looks like